Good evening, everybody. We're going to call to order the Board of Directors of the Flood Control Water Conservation District, also known as Zone 7. Yeah. If we could begin with a roll call, please. Director Leopold, Coonerty, Caput, Here. McPherson, Lynn, Here. Bilicic, Here. DeHart, Gonzalez, Ponce, Siri. And I'm here too, even though nobody oh, wants Chair to say Friend. my name. No, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a ghost. <laughs> so I'd just like to note that we do have a quorum. Are there any changes uh, um, to tonight's agenda? Mr. Schroeder, are you the one who's going to be doing that? No changes. Perfect. All right, so we're going to begin tonight with oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the community to address us on items that are not on today's agenda but are within the purview of Zone 7. Would anybody like to address us right now? I, I do have a communication for the board. Um, there's been some interest uh, from the chair as well as our district engineer um, in changing the structure of the meeting agenda. Um, and we're currently working on that with our uh, county council on how to achieve those changes. So we hope to bring those to the board um, at a future board date very soon. Thank you. This is a point that was brought up at the previous meeting, which is that some of these items could be, for example, on consent, such as like an approval of minutes or basic components, but yet we take each individual item unnecessarily so. Okay, so any other oral communications for not items not on the agenda? I see none, we'll move on. Oh, sorry, Director Billisich, briefly. Just very quickly, I, I would like to make sure that the levy project in the future is always a um, standing item on the agenda so that we always get an update. An update. We never know. You know, I, I know that we do a good job here and a lot of things happen, but this would be good because there's a lot of things happening with the levy. Thank you. That's a good idea. Okay, so we'll move on to Zone 7 board meeting minutes approval. Are there any questions on the minutes? Director Bilsich? No, no, I was going okay. to move anybody, to approve. Is there anybody from the community you'd like to address us on the minutes? <laughs> okay, uh, Director Bilsich made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Unanimously, we'll move on to item three, which is as the board of directors of zone seven to accept and file the status report on the Corps of Engineers storm damage repairs as recommended by the district engineer, Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair, members of the board. I'm here to happily uh, let you know that the Army Corps and their contractor has completed the repairs to the Pajaro and Salsipoyas Creek levee systems. These are repairs to damage that occurred as a result of the 2017 winter storm season. There were 17 sites that were repaired at a cost, no cost to the district, but at a cost to the Army Corps of approximately six and a half million dollars. Um, <clears throat> we are continuing to work with the Corps and their contractor on buttoning up any kind of damage that was done to the levee top road, which we know is very important to the city as well as to the district. Um, it's heavily, heavily used. Um, so we're working out those details as well as some last minute tweaks to um, some of the repair sites or some small changes that uh, engineering staff at the, uh, would like to see made. Um, but we are happy to, to say that the repairs are done. There is one more site on Salsipoitis Creek on the far side, away from the city side, that still has plastic on it. That site has been requested for repairs to the core, and we expect them to complete those repairs at a future date. Um, but city residents should be rest assured that uh, all the damage that they have been walking past for the last two years has now been repaired. Um, so. Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, you accept and file the status report on the United States Army Corps of Engineers storm damage repairs. Uh, Director Bilsich? Um I know that we've done the repairs. What about rodents? People keep talking to me about rodents out there, and they were saying that 
the repairs may be made, but the rodents are still active. What do we do about that? So we are um, working with our fleet management service to procure a rodent control, a new piece of rodent control equipment um, that we hope to start employing this year. Um, and we will be experimenting with that equipment to some extent to see how well it works. But we've heard that it's very efficient um, and we intend to get control of uh, whatever rodent problems that do get reported to us. But we have a constant maintenance program and we're constantly addressing compaction of the levee and rodent control. It's an it's a issue that we deal with uh, on a daily and weekly basis. I really appreciate that because I was asked by some constituents who are on the other side, um, say, other side of South Poitiers Creek saying, there's rodents, you know, if they're, they're making holes all the time. And so if we're addressing it, that's great. I'd also like to take this um, moment to thank the county and thank the city, thank you, Mark, and uh, Jackie McLeod for all of the work that's been done for the levy. I don't think people realize how much energy goes in, and there's many other people I've probably forgotten, but um, it's, it's a big deal, uh, and I really appreciate it happening now because we are going to get rain, I think, this year. We just squeaked by last year, but um, this is great. So, and and I would I would like to to, re, uh, to echo that thanks from our staff. We've had an excellent partnership with the city for quite some time, and they continue to be excellent partners. And we work really well together, and we're very happy that we're working together on the Pajaro. That's great. So thank, thanks to the city. Well, you know, and um, Director Palmasano is uh, always there, involved in so many different projects. So it's good to have uh, a strong public works department on both sides. And, and Monterey too. I mean, it takes everybody to work to make it work. And I think, I just appreciate the pressure that um, Jimmy Panetta's office and others have put on the Army Corps of Engineers and they have kind of risen and gotten this piece done. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Caput. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all the work you're doing. And uh, uh, you said it costs how much for the Army Corps to do it? Approximately six and a half million dollars. Okay, that's great. And then uh, uh, we, we actually have a resident that lives in that area. Uh, you have anything to say, uh, uh, Rhea DeHart? Me. Um, because it's not if we're going to have, you know, flooding. It's when we're going to have flooding. And I think we're the flood people over there in Zone 7. So it's just great that we're really beginning to see, you know, something like 17 sites that were repaired and so on. Right. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and, that, and that one site, when you said a future date, would that be next year after the rain season? I'm going to be pushing on the core like I always do for them to do those repairs as quickly as they can. I think they'll really th the, the thing that's going to get in our way is the rainy season. Um, so realistically, I expect them probably to be dealing with it next spring or next summer. Great. And I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it comes up later, but we'll have some kind of a uh, – I know it's not a lot of information, but on, an update on the 100-year plan uh, – I don't know if that's on item nine or eight. It, or it nine. is on the agenda. It's yes. Coming up. Okay. I'll hold now. Make a motion. Oh, we're going to go to the community. Is there anybody from the community that'd like to address us on this item? Okay. Seeing none, bring it back to the board director, Bilicic. I'd Like to make a motion to approve this. I'll second. We have a motion from Director Bilicic. Uh, it's specifically for the accept and file the status report, correct? Right. Okay. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item four, which is the Board of Directors of the Santa Cruz County Flood Control and Water Conservation District Zone 7 to accept and file a presentation on the Shell Road pump station history and status and direct the staff to return to the board in January of 2019 as recommended by the district engineer. And we have the Shell Road pump station attachment presentation. Mr. Thank you, Shredler. Chair, members of the board. Um, at, your, uh, at our last June 18th uh, board meeting, um, you approved our proposed budget which recommended 
$300,000 for Shell Road pump reconstruction, and you requested us to return to present an outline on the history and status of this pump station to assess the need for any rehabilitation or reconstruction. And I would like to uh, hand over the presentation to our district uh, flood control engineer, Rusty Barker, who will be giving you an outline on the history and status of this pump station. All right. Is this on? Good. Good evening, board members. My name is Rusty Barker. Uh, I'm new to flood control with the county. Um, really excited to work on this project. And tonight I'm going to be pre presenting on the Shell Road pump station going to give a little bit of history and background and the current status of the pump station. So the pump station is located uh, on the little red dot. Um, it's kind of the interface between the Pajaro River Lagoon and the slough network and the upper watershed that feeds it. There's about a 20 square mile watershed that that drains down to this point. Um, on the slough side, it's mostly fresh water. On the lagoon side, you're looking at more kind of saltish, saltwater, brackish water. Uh, it was constructed in the early 1940s along with the tide gates and some of the levees on the left bank. Um, let's see. Okay, the current condition. So I went out to the site uh, back in August and took some pictures. So this is a picture of this first one looking at the pump station. Um, the pumps are housed in the, the kind of shed looking thing there. And then we have the tide gates and these are mostly obsolete. These were built back in the 40s and have been replaced by flap gates, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, here's another look at the, the pump house um, and the tide gates. Looking back towards Shell Road, there's culverts that go underneath the road. And then on the other side, we have the flap gates. And so the flap gates prevent the water from, in the lagoon from backflowing into the sloughs. Um, it's important to note this facility is operating year round. When I was out there back in August, it was pumping. Um, it's mostly operating in dry weather conditions and in light rains when, when the water level really starts to come up. Um, most of this is inundated and, and the pumps are actually turned off. Uh, it was never built as a flood control facility. Um, and another important note is it helps prevent saltwater intrusion from coming from the lagoon and going back towards um, the slough area. The sloughs, it should be noted, and I'm going to rewind a little second because I think I missed something. In the upper part of the watershed, the sloughs that feed in, there's a lot of tile drains in most of these um, ag fields that drain into this slough. And the purpose of the pump is to actually keep this, this drainage ditch, this canal, this channel, um, at a lower level so that those, those fields can drain into it. So fast forward and back to where we were. Um, Pajaro Valley water has a pump in Harkin Slough, and so it's important that the salt water doesn't intrude up there because they, they harvest the fresh water from the sloughs and use it in their recharge system. Um, so that's kind of the current state of the pump. Um, part of this exercise was to go back and see what kind of documentation there has been. I'm new to the county, and so part of this was for me just to get up to speed. Um, back in the formation of Zone 7 in 1991, um, the pumps and the culverts were highlighted as a project to be taken care of. They kind of talk about in this phasing, so Phase 2 and Phase 3 are referenced here. I imagine there was a Phase 1 before the formation document was written. We couldn't find any documentation on it, but I imagine it's a feasibility design construction kind of phasing. Um, my pr one of my predecessors, Carissa, um, also kind of had some notes on this, and she believes that maybe this, this item was taken care of. There, in, in 2008, the pumps were replaced at the pump house. Uh, two pumps were donated by local farmers, uh, and those were installed by the county. Uh, and there's also upgrades to the electrical system. 
Um, in 1993, there was a Parle River management plan, Parle River Lagoon management plan. Um, we'll talk about some leaky risers that, that may need to be fixed. Um, but their recommendation was a direct connection of the pumps to the, um, the downstream lagoon. Kind of stepping back and taking a big picture, I think it's important to understand any system that we're going to work on. As soon as the, the flood waters start to come up, uh, the system's going to be, start behaving in a more kind of historic pattern. And so I was able to find this documentation on the historical ecology of the marsh. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. It's kind of hard to see in the picture, but there's a, an aerial image, that black and white, and it shows the marsh area in the lagoon in 1931 prior to the pump being built and installed. Um, and you can see there's actually there's two channels that run down the um, on either side. And some of the modeling, we, we, we were talking with um, Brian Lockwood from Pajaro Valley Water Agency, and we were looking at some of the modeling that they did for their Harkin Slough project. And some of the modeling, the, the, the flooding was actually matching quite closely to the, the footprint of the historic marsh. Um, another document we were able to find, this was um, written by Santa Cruz County Department of Public Works. Um, it's kind of an informative document, and it shows um, what part of the lagoons and the Pajaro Dunes colony flood at what elevation. So here's an image taken from that report. Um, kind of shows color coding w which parts you can expect to start flooding at different elevations. And all those flood elevations, those water levels, are referenced to a staff gauge that's located at Beach Road. Of importance here, because we're talking about Shell Road pump station, at five feet, when this gauge reaches five feet, which I think is about here or here, um, the Shell Road pump station, it, it says it becomes threatened, but it essentially becomes non-operational. Here's kind of a picture showing that. So on the top, we see what the water levels start to look like. As, as the water's coming up, it's starting to reach the top of that tide gate. Um, and then at five feet, it's essentially over the top of the tide gate, and the water is flowing back into the farmlands upstream. So you start to see inundation. And when it gets to that level, there's no need to run the pump because it would just be cycling the water through. Um, and they have to leave it off until the, the flood waters recede. Uh, I think this is the last document I have in here. Um, this was a report done by Schaff and Wheeler for the County of Santa Cruz. They were looking at um, breaching. So as I'm sure most people here are aware, the, the mouth of the Pajaro River will <coughs> plug up with sand and the, and the river can't drain. And so the lagoon has a tendency to back up and fill with water. And so they were looking at different alternatives for dealing with that issue. Um, one of the alternatives they looked at was upgrading the pump station at Shell Road. Um, the results of the analysis say that it, it would cost about $840,000, and this is 2007 money to flood proof or replace the, the pump station. The benefits would be, it'd be it, it would offer increased flood protection redundancy um, in the upstream area, so for the farmlands, and then there would be relatively no impact um, in the lagoon. So next steps. Um, we're gonna continue researching and studying this, this, this site, this problem. Uh, we're going to continue looking at the, the documentation that we have on hand. There's a lot to go through. We still have another couple studies that we're looking at right now. Brian Lockwood from PV Water um, pointed us to a couple reports. There was the Watson's, Watson Slough report that they did with the Resource County or Resource Conservation District. Um, and then there's a Wetland Watch report. There's also a Watsonville Slough Watershed Conservation and Enhancement Plan that I was just looking at today. Um, we're going to assess the pump station performance, talk with the drainage crew, what needs to be fixed. Um, and then 
start looking at documentation, maintenance documentation and the cost. What, what are the rough estimates? How much is this costing on an annual basis? The plan is to report back to the board in January 2019, recommend a plan moving forward to investigate hydraulic, environmental, and economic impacts um, related to the pump, improvements, or a replacement of the pumps. Um, so that wraps up my presentation. Thank you very much. So it, it is recommended that we you accept and file this presentation on the Shell Road Pump Station history and status and to direct staff to return to the board in January 2019 to provide a more detailed problem statement, which can include a proposal for consideration to seek consultant services. Uh, thank you, Director Siri. It stops raining. So, uh, if if the board allows, yeah, please. That, um, I think when you throw rising sea levels into the mix, that there's um, there would be the need for increasingly large facilities down in the, in the lower watershed to prevent flooding of the farmland. Um, there are existing federal as well as private levies, as you well know, down there. This specific facility does not appear that it was originally intended to protect against large-scale flooding. It, it looks like it was developed for to control water levels at lower and less severe flood levels. So to propose a structure that would prevent flooding widespread across the ag areas in the lowest portions of the watershed is a far larger problem than just this facility. And on top of, to, to build on what Mark's saying, um, in addition to sea level rise, there's also issues with subsidence in the area. Director Caput, then Director Bilicic. Yeah. Uh, uh, does this go back to about what 1991, something like that, uh, in the history of of this, uh, you know, Shell Road? Yeah, it was identified in the formation documents. Right. And uh, if, if I'm not confused, was uh, I might be wrong, but this was brought up. The question was brought up from here from somebody in the public. They wanted to know. How money was allocated and spent on the up the upkeep and the importance of the uh, the pump station? Is that so, what we, right? so so we spend approximately twenty five to thirty thousand dollars a year on this pump, and that includes our own crew maintenance of the facility as well as the utility bills that we pay to run the pump. Sure. And the money was uh, allocated way back when uh, in the history. It, yeah. yeah. So if it exceeds, for example, if it exceeds $25,000, we have the money to fix it. So the, the money that we use for utilities comes from a specific line item in our budget, and whatever maintenance we conduct for that facility comes from our maintenance portion of our budget. The line item that was in our proposed and approved budget from our last board meeting was a specific line item that addresses the Shell Road pump station explicitly. And uh, this is a hypothetical, and it'll be the last one I ask on that. Uh, let's say that that pump uh, station completely failed. Uh, what would be, uh, how great would it increase flooding in, what, the farmland? So if it completely fails, it, it, it depends on what you mean by completely fail. When water levels get high enough, as, as Rusty was showing, once it gets above about five feet on that staff plate, right. that facility becomes non-operational and it plays no role in the water levels out there on the farm field. When the pump has failed in the past from pipe bursts and things like that, we repair it relatively quickly, but what it fails to do then is pump water from the slough into the lagoon side um, on the other side of Shell Road. So that style of failure is, that's the impact of that failure, is it just stops pumping the water. And that uh, also helps with saltwater intrusion. Uh, right. Right. Because we're, okay. Thank you. 
So if there's, um, is, is this what controls the flooding on Beach Road? No. Not at all? No. Unless it totally failed and then it would, you, that's when the water rises? Um, if it totally fails, the only, in other words, if it, if it becomes inundated above five feet, like I said, the, the water levels inundating Beach Road are just doing that because of the water levels themselves. It has nothing to do with the facility. If the pumps stop evacuating water from the sloughs, the only way you would have flooding on the slough side is if you had that happen during excessive rainfall. And that's very unlikely to happen because when we have excessive rainfall, that's when that pump facility becomes immaterial. Okay, thank you. And so I rewound, re did a little rewind on the presentation. Um, at five feet, the, so on the staff gauge, when the water level gets up to five feet, that's when the pump becomes ineffective. And then at five and a half or 5.8 feet, it, that's when you start to see flooding at Shell Road. And so that flooding happens beyond the capability of the pump. Okay, we'll open it up for the community. Is there anybody from the community would like to address on this? Ms. Turley, thank you for coming down tonight. Welcome. Thank you for the presentation. My name is Carol Turley, representing Pajaro Dunes Association. I have a horrible problem with gophers at my house, and if the county has any advice or can loan their equipment, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank Matt and Mark for their openness and willing to talk to us um, frequently. Um, I'd like to thank Rusty for the presentation. I actually learned a few things, so I appreciate that. Um, we're happy that Shell Road is on your agenda and that it's being addressed. Uh, the pump station there has been a problem for a long time, I believe. Um, Flooding is a concern to Pajaro Dunes as well as the farm, uh, this neighboring farmland. We'd like to be active participants in the process um, and would like to be kept up to date as to what's happening. Um, and if there's anything that we can do to help move the project along, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to bring it back to the board. And, and obviously, this is a longitudinal issue. Beach Road's a longitudinal issue. The levee's a longitudinal issue. Breaching's a longitudinal issue. Um, so to the degree that we, uh, I appreciate the fact that you are providing a timeline for a direction on this. And I think uh, in regards to, uh, it isn't appropriate to talk about it necessarily with, with this agenda item, but in generally speaking, on some of those tangentially related items of access down into the dunes, uh, it would make sense to do the same thing. Uh, where we start looking at it because the decisions that we're making in regards to even how the levee will be constructed will have impacts on water flow that could have uh, sort of other decisions we've made on breaching and the presentation or the document you provided from 2007 was predicated on flood assumptions and water flow assumptions that may change as the levee actually gets uh, constructed and so none of that has been taken into consideration I think it makes sense to actually uh, relook at those things before we go down the some of the discussions we've had, such as raising Beach Road, et cetera. Is there a, a motion on this item? I want to make a motion um, to accept this report and to return to the board in January with a, a recommendation. A second. We have a motion from Director Bilicic and a second from Director Caput for the recommended actions. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Move on to item five, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to authorize the chairperson of the board to sign letters on behalf of the district requesting inclusion of contributed funds clause, of a contributed funds clause in the district's existing federal cost share agreement for feasibility and a policy compliant design agreement containing an accelerated funds clause from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and take related actions as recommended by the district engineer. Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair. Members of the board, um, I'm here to provide you an update on our Pajaro River levee reconstruction project. Um, where we're at now in the process is we're expecting to get our director's report, which would be the ending of the feasibility phase. And this board item here states that date as February 4th, 2019, which was actually in the notification that the Corps provided to us at the time of the writing of this memo. Since then, the core team has been reconvened and is working on the project again. The exemption request that allows them to push their director's report out from our originally expected uh, date of this July to February, that exemption ends in March. And because they've had some struggles, much to my dismay of getting their staff back onto this project, 
that date has actually been pushed to March. Um, I have been told that we're not going to get it any later than that date because they don't have any other options available to them. We've kind of heard this story before. Um, this prompted me to call Lieutenant Colonel Rayfield as well as the head civilian officer at um, Sacramento District to get them back on this project, and I think we've successfully done that. So the challenge in front of core staff to complete our feasibility report by March of 2019 is to address comments, technical comments from the review process that has already occurred this last spring and to develop a white paper which describes the risks to the project um, in deferring some of the revised benefit and cost calculations to the design phase. Um, the risks to the project are changes to, slight changes to the project envelope or components to the project depending on how that benefit cost ratio plays out. It could um, change the cost of the project as well as the BCR itself. We expect the BCR to go up and not down if it does change at all, but it's not going to go up very much. Um, to facilitate uh, our progress into design, what we are seeking with the core is a policy compliant design agreement that has what's called an accelerated funds clause in it that allows us to front uh, additional monies that we have available to us at the time. Uh, to the core so that they can keep the momentum going with the process. We're also reading between the lines and recognizing that even though they've told us with a fair amount of certainty that March is the last latest deadline that they have in front of them, we've seen it happen before and so we're contingency planning. And so what we'd like to do is get a contributed funds clause added to our federal cost share agreement for feasibility. That allows us to reluctantly but proactively give money to the core to complete feasibility. If they don't complete feasibility by, Mar by March without a contributed funds clause, they would have to go back and request another work plan funding alteration, which would at a minimum push that report date out to August. We don't want to see that happen. So we want to position ourselves to front them a small amount of cash if they run into the, an event where they can't produce this report by March. Um, so we are very excited to get that report from them in March and get out of feasibility and design. To that end, we are continuing our yearly advocacy trips to DC in support of the project to meet with our congressional representation and thank them for their support, as well as to uh, work with the Army Corps headquarters as well as OMB and appropriations staff to see how we can get this project into design and construction. Um, we are in a separate board item going to be um, looking at our needs for a program management consultant to carry us through the next uh, year to several years through feasibility and into design to look at um, financing the project and coming up with the right governance structure for a new levy reconstruction project. We are also separately have uh, another board, board item on um, completing CEQA for the project. And we are continuing to work with our assembly member, Mark Stone, as well as some other consultants on our state subventions funding for the project. Um, so we would uh, recommend that you authorize the chairperson of the board to sign letters on behalf of the district requesting inclusion of a contributed funds clause in the district's existing federal cost share agreement for feasibility and a policy compliant design agreement containing an accelerated funds clause from the United States Army Corps of Engineers and to accept and file the status report on the Paw River Flood Risk Reduction Project. Any questions on this item? Director Bilsich? I just want to um, commend you for holding the Army Corps. We've got to keep get this done. March 2019, I mean, that you say it is the latest, but we all know we've seen it delayed, 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 on and on and on. Um, I hope that is their drop dead date um, because we need to get from progress to design. It's very important. I, I continue to not be optimistic, but to be hopeful in that we have the capabilities at the staff as well as with our assistance through you all at the board as well as Congressman Panetta to affect change to get them to move on this project, and we appear to be successful in doing that. I think right now we do have a strong team, you know, the city, the county, the chair, I mean, you've got and, and Congressman Panetta, 
the board. You've got a lot of different agencies working together, and I think um, it's the best thing we can do for the Powell River and, and the South Suedes Creek is to have everybody, because you know, fun gets diverted to Sacramento or San Francisco or wherever. We need it right here, and I think we have a strong team. I hope this continues and, and um, we'll continue along those lines. I appreciate all your support, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to open it up for the community. Anybody from the community would like to address us on this item? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll bring it back to the board. Director Bill Sitch. I'd like to make a motion to approve this and authorize the chair to sign letters on behalf of the district requesting inclusion of contributed funds clause in the district's existing federal cost share agreement. And I'll make, so I'm, I'll move th this motion you forward. Move all, okay. The whole thing. All the recommended actions? Yes. Okay. And we had a second from Lynn, is that correct? I'll second, yes. Okay. Uh, any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Thanks for the work on that, Mr. Stradley. Uh, number six is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to approve amendment to agreement with Community Tree Service, increasing compensation by $51,254.62. Seriously? <laughs> okay, it's very specific. For a new total not to exceed amount of $360,750.94 and authorize the district engineer to sign the amendment to agreement on behalf of the district to accept and file a status report in the Pajaro River Vegetation Maintenance Project and take related actions recommended by the district engineer. We have the ICA Community Tree Service. We have the amendment, the amendment scope, the map, and the ADM 29 for Community Tree Service. Uh, Mr. Stradley. Specificity is because we don't want to pay a cent more. Um, okay. At the June 18th board meeting, you authorize the district engineer to award contract to the most qualified firm um, for vegetation maintenance in the Pajaro River and to return to your board to report on project status. And we have awarded that contract to the only responding firm to our request for proposals, which was Community Tree Service. Um, and they have been hard at work this summer clearing vegetation from the Santa Cruz County side of the Pajaro River and the lowermost section of Salsa Poitras Creek uh, below Highway 129 where the vegetation is quite thick. Um, they have been moving very quickly and they have currently uh, performed their tree trimming services from Highway 1 extending past the city of Watsonville through the confluence area and are continuing to work their way up towards Murphy Road. They have um, uh, at our request, um, dealt with high priority, um, thickly vegetated areas first, um, but are moving quite quick through the area. In our arrangements made with the permitting agencies, um, we are required uh, to remove wood chips that are developed from this maintenance activity rather than to dispose of them on site as an as district staff would prefer to do as an erosion control measure. So that change to this uh, work um, entails additional costs um, from different equipment and extra time to deal with that material. And that is the basis for our request for an amendment um, to the agreement with Community Tree in the amount of $51,254.62. Um, Beginning this fiscal year, we're also going to be working with the resource agencies on developing a, a new comprehensive stream maintenance program. So what we're doing this year is quite expensive. We hope to not do, um, uh, 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 instead of dealing with punctuated, very expensive maintenance episodes, we'd like to deal with more chronic uh, issues and incremental issues and lower costs. And so part of that strategy is developing a different stream maintenance program that can help meet our conveyance standards as well as appease the resource agencies and get the permits required to do this compli somewhat complicated work. So with that said, um, it is recommended that you approve the amendment to the agreement 19D0304 with Community Tree Service Incorporated, increasing compensation by $51,254.62 for a total not to exceed amount of $360,750.94. Authorize the district engineer to sign the amendment to agreement on behalf of the district and accept and file a status report on the Paw River Vegetation Maintenance Project. I forgot to add, we have, as with so many of our projects, we have had um, incredible par partnership with 
uh, the city on this work in terms of dealing with homeless encampments, trash cleanup, and the work itself. And we, uh, again, appreciate that partnership and the hard work of uh, Jackie McLeod and Steve Palmasano supporting all the work we do in Zone 7. Are there any questions about the trees? Director Bilicic. Um not so much the trees. I, I really appreciate the fact that trees, something's happening. But what about the ve vegetation that's growing in the riverbed? That is the vegetation that, that we are dealing. So we are required to leave a narrow strip of vegetation along the lowest margin of the channel. But we have a pretty aggressive strategy for dealing with the rest of the vegetation that has grown quite thick over the past few years. That is exactly what we're addressing. That's great. I just want—I thought that was included, but I wasn't quite sure. I know we've talked trees, but people ask us all the time, what about the riverbed? What about the riverbed? And the vegetation, you know, rises. And so this is great. Thank you. I'll move to approve. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Please, sure. Director DeHart. Improvement that rather than doing this every five years, that we're doing it yearly because that vegetation needs to be taken care of. It, there is some irony to the fact that the work that we do actually improves flow, which reduces our benefit when we're doing a greater levy project uh, by reducing the likelihood of flooding, but it's a necessity. But it sort of shows you that you get punished by the Corps for actually doing your job. Um, but I completely agree with you, Director DeHart, but we should recognize that the maintenance that we do, in some respects, the, the Corps would, would uh, look more favorably upon something that failed every year and flooded every year than they do the work that we do and the successful work that the two jurisdictions do actually make it worse for us on the funding standpoint. We do have a, a motion. Was there a second? It was from, motion was from a Caput, second, second from um, Director Bilicic. Anybody from the community like to address us before we close this item? Seeing none, oh, all, oh, oh, oh. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. I just wanted to add one quick thing. I, I think this is related. Uh, the cost of the veg, uh, you know, uh, putting in more trees and stuff like that, it was affected by the, uh, the drought we had and then also with that big storm we had about a year and a half ago. Is that correct? So... The drought didn't appear to have too much effect on the vegetation growth in the channel. I mean, we're not really specifically measuring it, so I can't make a very firm statement on that. Um, the, the vegetation is definitely a concern when we have a storm season like 2017. Yeah. Um, that's why we need to make sure that we can convey the volume of flow through that channel that we are required to, and that's why we removed the, some of the vegetation. All right, thank you. Move on to item seven, which is Board of Directors of Zone 7 to approve the on-call list of three firms to provide environmental consulting services for various Zone 7 projects and authorize the district engineer to issue purchase orders and sign contracts as needed with the on-call consultants as recommended by the district engineer. Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair, members of the board. Uh, on May 4th, 2017, the Board of Directors of the Santa Cruz County Sanitation District approved an on-call list for environmental consultants that was established through a request for qualifications and RFQ process. Um, the on-call services term is for two years with the possibility of up to three additional one-year terms based on satisfactory performance. The firms on that list include Dock and Engineers, Drake Haglin and Associates, and Harrison Associates. So we at the district staff level would uh, very much like to save time and money for the district by adopting this on-call list of consultants for our own purposes for environmental um, services. Um, any purchase orders and contracts for services up to $100,000 would be approved by district engineer per the county's purchasing policy manual and consultant contracts in excess of $100,000 will be brought before your board for consideration. Um, is recommended that you approve the on-call list of three firms to provide environmental consulting services for the various projects, Dock and Engineers, Drake Haglin Associates, Harrison Associates, and authorize a district engineer to issue purchase orders or sign contracts as needed with the on-call consultants. Are there any questions from board members? Okay, I'll open up to the community. Anybody like to address this on this item? All right, we'll bring it back to the board. Director Bilicic. So moved. Move the recommended actions. Is there a second? I'll second. A second from Director Lynn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
It passes unanimously. Move on to item eight, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to adopt a resolution designating the Zone 7 District Engineer, sen Senior Civil Engineer, and the Santa Cruz County Emergency Services Manager as authorized agents for grant administration purposes with the State of California and take related action as recommended by the District Engineer. We have the designation of the applicant's agent and the resolution designated officials to act as authorized agents. Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair and members of the board. On September 13th, 2016, the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors adopted a resolution that designates officials authorized to execute applications and documents for obtaining financial assistance from the state. Um, that resolution um, contains four signatory authorities, three of which have retired, um, one of which is still currently our existing emergency services manager. So we would like to adopt a new resolution um, that would designate uh, the current uh, staff uh, members of Zone 7 as signatory authorities and authorized agents for grant administration purposes. Um, this, we're also requesting to uh, get signatures for our Cal OES 130 form. These will simply uh, provide us the opportunity to um, continue to seek assistance from the state for disaster uh, rehabilitation assistance as well as other grants. Um, it's purely an administrative manner. Um, it is recommended to adopt resolution designating the Zone 7 District Engineer, Senior Civil Engineer, and the Santa Cruz County Emergency Services Manager as authorized agents for grant administration purposes with the State of California, and to authorize the chairperson of the board as well as a minimum of two other directors of the Zone 7 board to sign form Cal OES 130 for grant administration purposes with the State of California. Anybody have any question about this administrative action? Okay, anybody from the community like to address us on this cleanup? Okay, we'll move back to the board for action. Director Bilicic. Um, so moved. I'll Wait. second. We have a motion of the recommended actions from Director Bilicic and a second from Director Lynn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll move on to item nine, which is as the board of directors of zone seven to authorize a district engineer to issue an RFP for project management services for the Pajaro flood risk reduction project and direct staff to return in January 2019 to the board to report on the consultant selection process and to award contract to the most qualified consultant as recommended by the district engineer. We have the MOU, the RFP, and the Pajaro levy reconstruction NED map. Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair, members of the board. Um, as we uh, finalize our feasibility phase to our levy reconstruction project and have hopes of getting into the design phase, we are in need of specialized consultant services to assist district staff in developing recommendations for the appropriate financing rate structures and governance structures to help fund this project. Um, this is uh, a, a tall order, it's expertise that we do not have here in our existing staff, nor do we have the time to do it with our limited staff. Um, our role as non-federal sponsors during the PED phase will be, will include evaluating and reviewing the core design, so we're going to need some technical expertise from a program management consultant on, on the engineering side. Um, we're going to need some expertise to look at evaluating and establishing a new governance structure. Um, evaluating and designing locally preferred enhancements if we uh, learn that th those are enhancements that we can afford to do for the community above and beyond what that is being proposed by the Army Corps. Um, to technically support our CEQA process uh, as well as um, funding efforts and to help us with public engagement and education. There will be a big component of re-engaging the community uh, above and beyond how they're engaged already in recent progress with this project, and to evaluate and adopt new Prop 218 compliant rate structures. So this is a very complex process. Um, it's, it's something that we need to seek uh, outside consultant services for. Uh, we have attached a request for proposals that describes uh, the services we are uh, seeking. Um, total contract cost is uh, going to be provided to the board at the January 2019 meeting um, when we will ask for your authorization to award contract. Um, these costs are, should be reimbursable under our Prop 1E grant with the state of California. 
Monterey County Water Resources Agency, our other non-federal sponsor in this levee reconstruction project, has indicated an interest in cost sharing, and they have been very involved um, lately with this project. But they are relatively cash-strapped right now, not in a position to do so. Um, but we are seeking uh, Monterey County Water Resources assistance with um, cost sharing the overhead. We would like them to split the cost share for the overhead costs associated with this contract uh, with your authorization to award in January. So with that said, uh, it is recommended um, that you authorize a district engineer to issue a request for proposals for project management services for the Pajaro River Flood Risk Management Project and to direct staff to return in January 2019 to the board to report on the consultant selection process and to award contract to the most qualified consultant as recommended by the district engineer. Any questions on this item? Director Belsich? Uh, just a, a quick question. I noticed that the um, MOUs look old. Are there any updated versions? I only say that because um, Betty Bobita has been off the council for a while and so has Supervisor Campus and, and they're the ones that have signed these documents. Has anything changed that they would need new documents? So they, they are a, a bit old um, and they do seem to refer, refer more to ongoing maintenance activities. I think that part of what's going to come out of this Governance, this evaluation of governance and financing structures is concurrence with our other uh, sponsors on the other side of the river about what the cost sharing arrangement is going to look like. So these are going to come they'll out of discussions over the next year, I'm sure. So they'll be updated by then? I would think, think so. Yeah. Okay. Director DeHart. In the MOU, has a date on it. The one by Betty Bobita. Uh, her signature, there's no date. And the one with Tony Campos, there's one in ink that's really hard to read. So we need to have these documents dated. Are there any other directors on this item before we move to the community? Or anybody from the community like to address us on item nine? Okay, move back to the board for action. Director Bilicich. I will make a motion to approve this wonderful um, document that's been proposed for us. We have a motion for the recommended actions from Director Bilicic. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Director Lynn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll now move on to item 10, which is the final item, which is the Board of Directors of Zone 7 to authorize a district engineer to select Cardno to complete the CEQA environmental review process and develop a final EIR for the Federal Pajaro River Flood Risk Reduction Project. Authorize a district engineer to award and sign a contract to Cardinal, just subject to negotiation of scope and fee, provided the contract cost is under $500,000 and direct staff to return in January 2019 to your board to provide a status update on the negotiated contract and the CEQA environmental review process as recommended by the district engineer, Mr. Strudley. Thank you, Chair and members of the board. Um, for this board item, I would like to introduce to you our resource planner who rounds out our crew in flood control, Antonella Gentile. She comes to us from a long history of experience with the planning department, and she is running our permitting program and sequel work. Antonella. Good Thank evening. you. As the local sponsors for the Pajaro River Flood Risk Management Project, Zone 7 and the Monterey County Water Resources Agency are the lead agencies under California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA, and are tasked with completing the environmental review process for the project. Prior to signing the federal cost share agreement in 2015, Cardno Entrix, now Cardno, uh, had prepared a draft environmental impact report for the reconstruction project. We believe that contracting with Cardno will be the most cost-effective option for completing the environmental review process. As such, we recommend that your board authorize the district engineer to select Cardno to complete the California Environmental Quality Act environmental review process and develop a final EIR for the Federal Pajaro River Flood Risk Reduction Project. Authorize the district engineer to award and sign contract to Cardno subject to negotiation of scope and fee provided the contract cost is under $500,000 and direct staff to return in January 2019 to your board to provide a status update on the negotiated contract and the CEQA environmental review process. Are there questions on this? I just have a brief sort of procedural question. Is there a reason we nor that we would put the negotiated scope 
up to a certain amount. It strikes me that I would negotiate the scope up to 499000 if I were Cardinal. So um, in other things that the, well, speaking on for the Board of Supervisors, other things we do, we normally do an RFP and then we issue an award based on the, to what that amount is based on what they bid. It strikes me as a little bit unique to tell people what we're willing to pay and then negotiate a contract based on it. I mean, is that, unless I'm missing something, I just thought that that was sort of a strange process. It, it, it is strange. It's, it's not the position we prefer to be in, but this action would um, provide a lot of savings compared to going out to a new RFP to deal with CEQA. So we have had some pretty detailed discussions with Cardno on their availability and their potential to do this. Um, we are going to try to arrange the most advantageous scope and fee that we can. Um, so yeah, it does put us in an awkward position, um, but just like our interactions with the Corps, we're gonna fight really hard to get a very competitive uh, scope and fee estimate from them to complete these services. It's really just a fine, it's a modification of work that they've already done to finalize work that was started in 2015 then, okay. I mean, that's, am I understanding that correct? Correct. Okay. It's, all, it's also to support the production of a final ER as well as all the public notification process that goes along with that. I got it. Okay. Are there other, uh, any other questions? I'll go out to the community. Anybody like to address us on the exciting world of CEQA? <laughs> no? Okay. You have, you'll have a certain amount of time to protest it anyway under CEQA. So. Uh, moving back to the board, all those in favor? Of, oh, actually, we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve this, item 10. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion from Director Bilicic and a second from Director Lynn for the recommended actions for item 10. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. I'd just like to thank everybody that did come tonight for actually coming. I recognize that it's a, a holiday for some, which is why we had a difficulty with quorum tonight, but we appreciate that we were able to make quorum and I appreciate all of you showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Where can I get a copy of the color?